Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Sinjin says, Deglan O'Donnell is my name uh, from ESB Electric Ireland. And uh, ESB Electric Ireland, uh, like uh, San Gobain, uh, just to say that we are delighted to be sponsoring uh, one of the sponsors of uh, today's conference. Um, we see energy services as a great challenge and a great opportunity for ESB Electric Ireland uh, and also for Ireland uh, as a whole. And on that note, I'd just like to say to uh, Stefan from Germany, Falsche Roth, wir wünschen Ihnen ein schönes Besuch nach Irland. Because uh, while we welcome our guests from abroad and we can learn from them, clearly one of the key messages that's coming across today is that where it comes to retrofit, there's an awful lot that we can do for ourselves. So I'm going to talk about a particular project, a real project that we've just completed in the last couple of weeks. It's 126 house estate uh, in Dundalk. Um, mixed ownership, that is local authority and privately owned homes in the one estate, uh, and all of the homes are occupied. And I suppose it's particularly interesting when we consider uh, what some of the earlier speakers uh, mentioned. Uh, Brendan Halligan, for example, talked about the industrialization of retrofit and the challenge of a million homes. And I suppose that was one of the drivers for this project to see you know, how it might be possible to roll out a larger scale retrofit. Um, so what I'm going to talk about really is uh, describe in simple terms that project, uh, give you the results, and, some, and then give you some preliminary uh, recommendations from that project. I suppose uh, I, I, what I need to say is that it was a partnership, uh, a three-way partnership indeed, between Dundalk Town Council, uh, SEAI, and ourselves. Uh, and we had each had our own goals, and thankfully the goals uh, were all in the same direction. Dundalk Town Co Council have an urban vision for Dundalk, and so they were looking to upgrade local authority housing in Ashling Park. And one of the challenges about upgrading local authority housing is that uh, particularly where you're in a mixed estate, is that the private residents uh, often, uh, you know, are, are not too happy about that if they see their next door neighbours getting a, a retrofit. So that's a particular challenge for local authorities. Um, it, also, what uh, the uh, Dundalk Town Council need to do, like all councils, is meet the SHIP uh, guidelines from the Department of Environment. Uh, that's the the um, social housing. Uh, improvement planning guidelines, uh, which essentially set down different ranges of energy efficiency improvements, uh, uh, typically between uh, 100 and 200 kilowatt hours per square meter per year for a house, uh, and ideally achieving a C1 or close to a C1 in terms of uh, a BUR rating for the house. And of course, uh, Dundalk uh, Town Council were anxious to uh, provide an exemplar for other local authorities. SEAI, uh, naturally, you would expect uh, very keen to support any innovation in this area, and we're keen to support uh, housing cluster energy retrofit pilot. Uh, and one of the things that they're working on uh, currently is analysing the results from that pilot, and will be involved in dissemin disseminating the lessons from from our pilot. And uh, from an ESB Electric Ireland point of view, uh, as I say. You know, we had a gut feel that uh, there were economies of scale to be derived from delivering larger retrofit projects uh, rather than single retrofit projects uh, and single house uh, projects. And also, uh, we have a remit around uh, fuel poverty, or at least we have a long-standing uh, engagement with uh, trying to uh, reduce the risk of fuel poverty. Um, and uh, as uh, perhaps people will know, that is uh, quite a problem in Ireland with over 20% of homes uh, qualifying under indices as being uh, fuel uh, poor. And, uh, uh, you know, that's something that we would like to uh, help address. Uh, uh, and we felt that this project would be uh, one way of tackling what is a multidimensional problem. So moving on to the uh, estate. Uh, Ashling Park, uh, most of the homes would have been built in the mid-1970s, 75, 76. Uh, even though it's one estate, 
even within that estate, there are a number of different home designs uh, for major home designs, and then there are variations on each one of those. So there are uh, uh, two-story homes, there are bungalows. Uh, the houses tend to be uh, small, typically about 80 square meters. Um, a, a, a mix of constructions, although predominantly cavity wall, cavity wall of different uh, gap widths, um, some um, uh, timber frame uh, in, in parts. Uh, the, uh, the windows and doors are in very poor condition. And uh, uh, there's a mix of gas and oil boilers, uh, about two-thirds gas, one-third oil. Uh, most of the, the oil boilers would be uh, more than 10 years old. So uh, we looked at the different measures that might readily be applied to uh, those houses. And uh, part of that, uh, th this was a process uh, and we work very closely with SEAI in particular in terms of identifying from looking at the houses and identifying the cost optimal measures for each house type. And that required uh, a BER type assessment to be done of each of the four uh, main house types and the variations thereof. Um, and based on that information then it was possible to design optimum solutions we, we looked at the solutions uh, based on a model that had previously been developed by SEAI and their consultants, Bezrac, uh, which essentially brought each measure down to uh, a value in terms of energy saved per euro invested. And uh, in that way, it was possible to uh, uh, rank the different measures, uh, not just individually, but obviously on a cumulative basis, because um, you know when you install a a high efficiency boiler, you don't use nearly as much energy, and therefore, uh, say, attic insulation, won't, you won't accrue quite as much savings as you would do if you hadn't installed the, uh, the boiler. So we put together an appropriate package for each house uh, uh, based on the house type and based on the measures in a cost-optimal fashion. And the project process um, and it's, I think, useful to, to look at it in this way when we think about trying to move this to a, to a, a larger scale at some future point. Um, there are four discrete phases, collecting the data, design and preparation phase, delivering, obviously, and post-delivery. Uh, we were fortunate in terms of collecting the data that Dundalk Town Council already had a wealth of information on the local authority housing, as I've mentioned. That was supplemented with in-depth uh, technical surveys uh, for uh, 28 of the 126 houses. Then uh, the uh, cost optimal design, uh, which I've mentioned, uh, we had to prepare a detailed delivery plan and we set ourselves a goal of delivering the full retrofit within eight weeks. And then in terms of community, communications was obviously a key uh, element also. Fortunately, we were able to draw on Dundalk Town Council's uh, relationships, uh, their, so their community liaison officer. Uh, we uh, organized two um, uh, public meetings. Uh, we wrote to each of the homeowners uh, and explained what it was we were doing. We talked to the local parish priest. Then in terms of delivery, uh, we, as I say, we delivered the project through July and August. Uh, an element of that was uh, documentation uh, because, you know, there are obviously uh, legal requirements when you go to work in somebody's house and uh, along with that we carried out a socio-economic questionnaire so we have quite an amount of data that uh, SEAI are crunching through at the moment. I have some preliminary results on that. Interestingly, what we found was that despite the fact that we had done a very detailed uh, technical uh, analysis in advance, and extrapolated that to the 126 buildings that we did come across some unexpected uh, work that we needed to do. So, um, you know, for example, uh, attic insulation, one of the problems that the residents had was storage. So it wasn't sufficient simply to put down uh, the required depth of attic insulation. Uh, you know, there is a real need, particularly in a small house, to have attic storage, so it was necessary to put down flooring in the attic as well. But there's an additional cost there. When you install uh, new, uh, new boilers, uh, 
um, there are requirements around the uh, ventilation for the building. And so there was, if you like, further uh, costs associated with that. Uh, the regulations have obviously um, you know, tightened up quite a bit in terms of things like separation distances between flu and, uh, and oil tank, where you have an oil boiler. And so oftentimes the flu had to be, uh, for, the, for the boiler, had to be uh, moved. So these are the kind of real things that you learn, I suppose, by carrying out a pilot. Uh, and certainly that's something that uh, we feel um, can be addressed in any future uh, projects of this nature. Uh, Post-delivery quality control, uh, we have what I like to call a, a, a triple lock quality control mechanism. Uh, within a week of the work being carried out uh, by ESB Electric Ireland, we were back in the house asking people how they had found the work, how they had, uh, were they, uh, you know, happy with what had been done, uh, you know, could they use the boiler, and in particular, uh, were they able to program or reprogram the heating controls? Um, and so we got quite a bit of feedback from that. But additional to that, we had quality control carried out by independent, our own independent assessors, and of course, uh, SEAI uh, and uh, Dundalk Town Council uh, for the uh, private and the public housing, respectively, also carried out uh, quality control. So in that sense, uh, you know, we're very uh, satisfied that it was a, uh, very strong on quality, and indeed that's the feedback that we've had from the residents and very strong uh, feedback and support from Dundalk Town Council. Community training is something that we haven't done yet, and indeed SEAI is going to take the lead on this. Um, but again, we want to make sure that whatever measures were, were um, installed are uh, utilized to the, to the maximum, and uh, SEAI will be putting together a, uh, an independent final report um, one of the things we want to do is I'll be presenting the results in terms of the, um, the calculated results. You know, uh, uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to check that against uh, real uh, energy consumption before and after. So here are the results. Uh, the, for the total project, the total saving was 1.4 gigawatt hours, which... Uh, I think gives an idea of the scale of a gigawatt hour, you know, because, because a gigawatt hour is so large, we tend to talk in small numbers, but it really is a, quite a massive amount of energy. Um, 124 houses, there were two houses that we couldn't actually work on, one because it was in the process of being sold, we couldn't contact the owner, and the second because uh, we came across one of those hardship cases that you do uh, sometimes come across where the individual had, had, had no uh, energy at all in the house, uh, no heating, no electricity, and that's something that's been dealt with um, uh, locally through the uh, Dundalk Town Council uh, so Social Services. The expenditure per house was, uh, okay, rounded figures, about €4,000. The average saving level was 140 kilowatt hours per meter square, squared based on the, the, um, the BER results. Average saving, 11,500 kilowatt hours, primary energy. And the average reduction, therefore, in heating energy consumption on a calculated basis is around 50%. And uh, converting the 11,500 into uh, an amount of money uh, utilizing six cents per kilowatt hour, which is the gas price, uh, leaves you with a, an average saving of about 700 euro per year. All averages, as you'll see in a minute, uh, there's quite a bit of variation, leaving a simple payback of just under six years. So the BER results for the pilot, before the retrofit, as you can see, most of the houses uh, would have fallen into the E1, D2 bracket. Um, somebody said, not as bad as hoped. Uh, but, you know, pretty bad and left a lot of room for, uh, for improvement. Uh, you can see that there were, there were houses there in the F and the G range, and one can only imagine what kind of expenditure there might be um, there in terms of uh, energy. Uh, after the planned measures, uh, it was possible to uh, leap forward in terms of the BERs. Uh, until uh, practically all of the houses were in the C level and uh, um, most C2 and C1. Uh, and, and at that point, we took some additional advice from uh, the man on my left here, Michael Hanratty of IHER. And uh, Michael has um, quite a bit of knowledge on this and was able to uh, give us some remedies to 
just push up, nudge up uh, some of those results. Um, uh, so, for example, the number, uh, quite a number of examples, but for example, by converting the chimney to a flue, by installing a baffle in the throat of the fire, it was possible to um, uh, up the BUR rating. Um, energy efficient lighting, obviously, as well, was a, a very strong addition. Um, but, Michael, don't worry, I won't give away all your secrets. So, in terms of the preliminary results that I promised you from the socio-economic survey, I mentioned that we were very interested in the whole area of fuel poverty. Um, and the first question there, are you in receipt of a fuel allowance? And most people in the room will know that if you are in receipt of a fuel allowance, you do qualify for the, under the, the Warmer Home Scheme for uh, uh, an energy retrofit. Uh, there is a waiting list at the moment, but you do qualify. So. Uh, in those terms, 62% of uh, the households visited would have qualified, uh, which I think is a very strong result. It means that our actions were very targeted, and that's a lot more than just the people in the local authority housing. Um, is your home kept adequately warm? 75% said no. Were there times last winter when you were cold because you could not afford to heat your home? 58% uh, said yes. And then in terms of the, what's generally regarded internationally, certainly as the UK, as the uh, threshold for fuel poverty, if you spend more than 10% of your income on energy, uh, you're regarded in the UK as being fuel poor. Now, I have to say these results need to be taken with some caution because they are based on people's responses to a, to a questionnaire. But based on the responses, 77.5% uh, were spending more than 10% on energy. And indeed, quite a number were spending more than 20%. So, you know, taking those very preliminary results together would indicate that by targeting um, what, what is a disadvantaged area, uh, also known as a, qualified now as a rapid area, uh, rapid is a designation um, the local authorities have. It stands for revitalizing area through planning, investment, and design. There's 100 such areas around the country. It would, ap it would appear that uh, it is possible to really target fuel poverty by targeting those areas. So re finally, recommendations. Uh, we believe area-based retrofit can be delivered quickly and efficiently. Uh, we think it's important that clear criteria for success are agreed in advance. So is it kilowatt hours per square meter? Is it to achieve a C1? Uh, or are there other criteria? And when we look forward, indeed, to the Better Energy Program, um, you know, I, we believe it will be important that all of those criteria are aligned. Uh, technical assessments for all houses before work commences, as I said. Uh, you know, what we've done, it was a pilot. There were learnings. We believe it can be streamlined further, and that that eight weeks for a similar scheme can be reduced considerably. Good communications, any project is important um, between the partners and also between the partners and the, uh, the local residents. So for example, and it was an initiative from um, you know, our own people on the ground provided a 24 hour free phone number so that if any of the residents had any question at any time, they could call that number, any question about the energy retrofit at least. And uh, that worked very well for us in terms of engendering confidence in the whole project. Uh, a very cost-effective approach, we believe, for local authorities. It's for local authorities to decide. But as I say, Dundalk Town Council have indicated that they're, they're very pleased with the project. Um, it's a turnkey solution, effectively. Uh, it can be done quickly. Um, you know, uh, we're now experienced in delivering that kind of project, uh, health and safety, etc. Uh, economies of scale, that's all taken care of. And uh, the final point on recommendations is that uh, from the initial and preliminary results based on the socioeconomic survey, and uh, as I say, SCAI is uh, going through these results independently as well, um, it, it does appear that uh, targeting uh, rapid type areas is an effective way to target people at risk of fuel poverty and uh, may well make a lot of sense rather than uh, you know, lots of individual trips to different homes. 
so that's it uh, from me. Um, I'd just like to uh, thank our partners uh, from uh, Dundalk Town Council, uh, David Storey and uh, Stephen Cull, who worked very closely with us on the project, and also thank SEAI, uh, Declan Mealy, uh, Magella Kelleher, and Aideen O'Hora. Um, and uh, I think together, this pilot, uh, we've proved that you know, there's something really interesting here, and hopefully uh, there will be many such projects into the future. Thank you. Kurmagov. <laughs>